Hi and good afternoon. My name is Chris Paley and I am happy that you guys are here today. Uh, we have a lot of good information for you. I am the DME or Durable Medical Equipment um, Services Manager for Ortho Virginia and again happy to have you. Uh, welcome to our Facebook Live. I'm going to take off my mask so you all can hear me a little bit better. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Ortho Virginia, we are the largest multi-specialty uh, orthopedic practice in Virginia. We have several regional locations now and growing. Um, we have the Richmond region, Northern Virginia, Virginia Beach, Lynchburg, and now in Southwest Virginia. So we're very excited to have um, all these new regions um, in, in our state. Um, if you would like to know more about us, we certainly can get you that information. We have a great website. It is www.orthovirginia.com, and hopefully um, you can get all questions answered there also. Um, today I want to talk to you all about a subject that is near and dear to me and has been for the past 18 years. Um, it is bracing and DME equipment. And um, our focus today will include some braces that we know um, our patients sometimes struggle with when they come out of our operatories or um, the, the hospitals or um, even when they see some of our um, certified orthotic fitters or athletic trainers. So hopefully this will answer some questions for you today. Um, we will be taking questions at the end of, of this and if you have any questions other than what we have talked about today, please feel free to ask us. Um, I'm, I'm here to answer any questions you have on any brace, so um, please do so. But before we jump in, I just wanted to um, invite you to invite your friends or your family and family members, if there's anyone that is involved um, in this and would like more information um, on what we're gonna talk about today, we'd certainly like to have them join us. So, if you want to just press your share button um, below, then um, they can join us and we'd be happy to have them. Um, so let's get started. Um, there are many types of braces um, on the market that address specific needs um, and uh, based on the issue that you have. Um, it's important to know that sometimes picking something out of a drugstore is not always the best option if you're not quite sure what, you, what your needs are. Um, so we definitely would like you to see one of our specialists before you do that um, to make sure that you are choosing the correct brace for the type of problem that you have. Um, our fitters are all specially trained. They are athletic trainers and or orthotic fitters and are able to help you with any of the questions that you have while you're in the office and even when you get home. Um, we just, we always want to make sure that you receive uh, exactly what you need. Um, Today we're going to discuss uh, single, um, simple braces, um, also post-op slings, simple slings. We're gonna move down the body to um, some of our um, more challenging knee braces like the uh, post-op knee brace. Um, we'll also look at the knee immobilizer and also on one of our simple hinged knee braces. Um, and that will, uh, that will certainly be uh, uh, something good to talk about here today. Um, we'll also um, end off with some of the uh, lower extremity uh, braces that we have, specifically the short boot and also the tall or standard boot. So um, without further ado, um, we're going to go ahead and get started on the, on the um, um, brace fitting and then I'll show you some, some tips and everything that you need to know for that. Um, but first, I'm going to put my mask back on because I'm going to have an assistant with me today. And um, come on over, Sarah. Chris, just to let you know, we're getting some feedback. If you could talk louder, that would be great. Okay. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about today uh, is going to be the simple sling. And um, I'm sure you all see these often around town and um, even in your offices and that type of thing. Um, it is very simple. That's why we call it the simple sling. It's used for several different things. Um, mainly it can be used for um, any post-op procedures that they don't require anything larger um, and just any kind of injury in the uh, wrist, elbow, um, forearm, and even in the shoulder and the clavicle area um, or if, if you want to um, call it your collarbone. So Sarah's gonna, Sarah's gonna 
do this with me. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece right here off. And most of these braces, if they're better quality, will have um, a lot of cushioning here. So if you if you use this brace, um, a lot of times you don't have to move that anything around too much because the cushioning is from one end to the other. The most important thing with these braces um, is that we make sure that the elbow is in the corner of the of the brace right here, and uh, make sure she's in here real well. These braces have two areas where you can do adjustments. It is in the strap here at the wrist and also in the back of the elbow. And we recommend when you first put these on, you'll probably see us do it where we will, we will do an adjustment on both ends. Some people think that this is the only end that you would do the adjustment on, but that is not correct. I'm gonna stop you one second. Can I check the microphone for you real quick in your pocket? Yes. I think there's a little, just wanna double check. Sorry, everybody. Let's try this again. I will talk louder. Sorry, everyone. I can do that. Um, so you'll put it through the two little D rings right here, and you'll you'll. Most of these are Velcro. Also, there's all kinds of different brands, but most of them are Velcro and um, this model. And then we will take this strap right here, bring that up a little bit too, so that she's she's well in this brace in the in the elbow here. The one thing, and I'm going to move you around here, Sarah. The one thing that you do want to check and make sure is that the hand is inside the sling. At some point, we like to have it at least halfway in the sling. You don't want hands hanging out the edge of the sling. There's also a little tip for you right here. Most people don't know this, but this little piece right here, this little loop, is also a place for them to put, for your patients to put their finger, their thumb in, and that does hold that um, elbow back into the brace and the hands in the front there also. Um, we like to have the hand a little bit higher up than we do the elbow, and that's that's just to make sure that there's um, the swelling, which would always go south, is, is away from the hand. And um, so this is what it should look like. All right. Um, the next thing we would like to talk about is very similar to this, but it is called the post-op, um, the AP, AB post-op sling, and that's an abduction sling. We use these, sling, these slings many times for surgical shoulder surgeries um, and uh, because they do bring the arm out, which is the abduction. Um, there is a, there's a couple of different positions we have with this brace, um, but it would also depend on what your physician is, is asking of you and it depends also on the procedure that's being done. So some may have their arm in the in the front and some may have it on the side. So make sure that you get that information from your physician. I'm sure they'll let you know that. This particular brace has a bunch of straps, but I'm gonna tell you where all of them go. You're gonna have the same technique elbow in the back of the of the, um, the corner of the brace. This one does not have a pad except right here. So this particular model uh, has the pad here and you can move this up and down. I have pre-fitted this for Sarah so um, we're not going to do that today but but that can be moved. There is a flip right here. Again, the same process as, as you had before. Sorry, Sarah, I'm pulling your hair out here. You're fine. Um, this will be uh, the strap that goes around her waist, and this is what makes it an immobilizer brace. So we like to give our patients a hug. Um, Do you mind turning to the side so we can see the other side where you just, perfect. Yeah, thank you. And then it clips in right there also. So you have a click here and a click here. These two little straps, there's one that's kind of puffy and there's also one that's flat, and these will help a great deal um, for after you have your surgery, you put one right here. It's all Velcro, so it's very easy to use. This will help hold your elbow back in the corner of the brace. 
And then this little gadget right here is what you'll use to hold your phone back. Um, some people like it, some people don't, but it all, it's just one more thing to help keep your arm in the proper position. Um, and we have her in the front here, but you can also add the abduction pillow. You get a little squeaky ball here, but don't use that until, the, until the, your physician tells you to. Um, this can also be used, which would go up underneath the arm and hold you in, um, out. So that will add to this brace. You want to demonstrate that? Yeah. case has got velcro so again it's very simple to move around um, and then this will go around her waist and click into click into the same place that the other um, brace did which is right on this side here and then you would just tighten that and here she is in the front but we also have patients that are on the side so make sure that you're um, clear about where your arm is supposed to be. So that is the post-op AD sling. And we're gonna move on to uh, the lower part of the body, which will be the knee. And we're gonna do the simple knee immobilizer right now because um, this one comes in the office very often, not on the knee, but actually around the ankle. So we wanna make sure this is put in the right, in the right place. It's not gonna help you if it's around the ankle. Lay on the table here. Uh, most of these, most of these braces, they're all de depending on the brand. They all um, will have different little tweaks to them. This particular one has extra panels on the side. You always want to make sure that um, these bars are on the side of the leg. They're not in the front or in the back, and if they are adjustable, so you can make sure that you have them in the right place and depending on the size of your leg you can also move it around there also i have i pre-fit this to sarah so uh i will show you on her this pad here sometimes is loose and sometimes it's actually built into the brace here but there is a a bar in the back and that bar will actually help hold the brace up it sits right on the top of your gastro muscle or your um, calf muscle and holds that up again these are non-functional braces they are a brace that you don't do a whole lot of things in so if you're doing too much in it it usually ends up around your ankle um, if, if you're doing too much in it or if you don't have it fit properly so what we're going to do here is we're going to have sarah put her leg into the brace that pad goes right behind the knee and then you're going to wrap it oops You're gonna do this strap first, which is right, right at the knee, right here. There's a little dip right here, and that's where your knee should be. And then you're gonna strap it over just like that. And then you have, we have um, a couple extra straps right here, but I'm gonna start with this one, because it's right below the knee. And we're gonna strap that nice and snug. Not too snug. You don't want to cut off your circulation. You don't want to press on any nerve or anything like that. So make sure that um, that you're not push, pulling these straps too tight, but that they're comfortable and that they're going to hold the brace up. And then right above the knee comes next. And then you can do either one of these. Next depends. But these really do anchor the brace to the leg, and then you can do the rest of the braces. And that goes with most any knee braces. These come in different lengths, um, and the lengths are really based on what, um, how tall the person is or how long their leg is. And we've seen them come in really short with six foot four people, and that's just really not going to do a whole lot. You definitely need the length for whatever. If you're going to use these, there's a reason for it, and you definitely need the length for it. So they come in lengths from 12 to 12 inches to 24 to 26 inches. So have a good, um, we have a good supply of them, so we have something to choose from depending on 
how long your leg is. So this is the knee immobilizer. Um, I will tell you this, this is just a little tip also, we call this strap maintenance. When you take your brace off, if you will stick your strap back on itself, it will keep you from getting all your dog hair or cat hair or anything like that all stuck up on your brace because then you end up having to pick all that off. So it's really good to make sure that you do the strap maintenance. Okay. Um, the next brace we're going to do is a little bit more complicated. And it's something that we, we um, like to do for you and then teach you how to use it before you leave the office. Um, sometimes we'll do that before you go to surgery and sometimes um, we'll do, have to do it after. But, but this brace we use is, is for ACL reconstructions, um, tibial plateau fractures, um, patella fractures, teletendon ruptures, anything like that that you need to have some immobilization and also have the opportunity to do any um, to do any range of motion blocks or locks. So this is the brace that you will get for those of you who have, have ever had an ACL reconstruction. This is usually what you have afterwards. So with this brace, I have pre-fit this one to, to Sarah's. Oh, I like your thoughts. <laughs> um, this brace is important to fit, to have fit well. Um, the good thing about this brace is all these pads will come off and you can wash them and we'll go over that in, in just a few minutes. But the condyle pads, which are the round pads right here, will go right on the center of that knee right here. You don't want it low down here, you don't want it too far up, but it needs to go right there. And you'll know it's right when you feel this strap in the back is right at that calf muscle again, because what that does is it holds, helps suspend that brace again, which is what you want to do. Again, it's not a functional brace, it's a post-op non-functional brace. So if you do too much in these, a lot of times they will come down. Um, so just remember that these braces are for resting and rehab and for um, getting, getting better. So for this brace, we're gonna shake her leg into the back of it. We'll pretend like she already had this done um, just to make sure that it's still fitting correctly. And then we will, we will take this strap first, which is right below the knee. Whip that in. What that does is that anchors the brace again so that you can um, work with the rest of it. The second, this will always be the first strap. The second strap will always be this one. Um, this is a good time to tell you too that these straps are usually long. Uh, we recommend that you not cut these until you are absolutely sure you are not going to have surgery. Um, we do need the extra length on them because if you did have surgery, uh, you would have a bulky dressing and we would need that extra length for that. So please don't cut these straps until you're absolutely sure that's not going to happen. Uh, uh, so what we usually do is we'll just fold them over and these tabs come off. So we'll just fold them over like that and anchor them down and then they're good to go. Um, this strap and this strap, you can do whichever one you feel most comfortable with next. Uh, I will say that this strap back here at the top in the back, that really needs to sit on that hamstring and that will also help hold the brace up. People tend to put braces on way too low. Um, so just make sure that you're, you're putting the brace up far enough so that it can, when you do start walking it, you kind of, it will fall a little bit, but it'll find what we call its happy place. And when it finds that, usually it stays right where it, right where it needs to be. And that goes for non-functional and functional bracing. These braces also telescope back and forth, the top and the bottom, which is good. So we can make it any length we need to. Um, and then we also have hinges on the side here that we can adjust depending on what our, our surgeon tells us we need, to, we need to do for the patient and depending on the diagnosis or the surgical procedure. So don't touch this after we set it. Um, Chris, just because somebody asked, is this a brace that always needs to be worn over the pants or can you wear it underneath as well? This brace should, any of these braces should be worn on the skin. So, and the reason is if, if Sarah has to do any kind of bending, when she bends, the pants are actually gonna pull the brace down. So all bracing should be done, should be put on, on the skin itself. 
and that goes for knee immobilizers, functional braces, and also um, um, what we're going to talk about next with the, um, the hinge brace. So this is just a demonstration, but we'd really prefer that you have these braces on the skin. So this is the post-op knee brace. Um, last in the knee family, we're going to talk about um, the hinge knee brace. This is more of a functional brace. It's what you'll wear to play soccer, to play basketball. Um, they come in different lengths depending on what um, the problem is or, or how active the person is. The one I'm going to demonstrate today has two straps, but we, um, we do have some that have four straps and the hinges also. These hinges can also put, we can put a block or a lock on them, um, but for the most part, these braces are, are pretty much used for full range of motion. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna have Sarah sit on the stool here. This is, when you're putting on these functional braces, the best, the best thing to do is to sit on the chair. It's, it's um, we see a lot of people put them on while they're standing up, but it is best to sit in the chair so you can see how to align the brace. So what we're gonna do here, um, most of these braces that we order have the popliteal cut out here. This does not go around the kneecap, okay? We have people come in sometimes with, with it looking like this, and that's not, that's not the way it's supposed to be worn. Um, the tag is usually always up at the top, and we will put this in the back of the leg here, and that is so that the, the material does not bunch up when you're walking. So what we'll do here is we'll take these condyle pads, which are right here, make sure they're lined up with the kneecap right here. And what I usually do is I'll have the patient help me bring this part around like this. These braces come in a pull-on version and in a wrap-around version, and we have both. Um, usually the, the wrap-arounds are used um, pretty often. The, the pull-ons are usually used for sports and that type of thing. So we have both versions if, um, if needed. Um, so this is Velcro at the top. This is Velcro down here. Um, again, I'm going to put this strap on first, right above that muscle right there. Nice and snug, but not too snug. Right in the D-ring and around. And that is the hinged functional knee brace. A couple yeah. people, sorry, a couple people have asked what is the difference between functional and sorry, functional and non-functional braces. Okay, great question. The non-functional braces are ones that you are not functioning in a lot. So, and what I was talking about before was if you do a lot in those braces, and you shouldn't because they're usually right after you get out of surgery or you've had an injury, um, they, they either come down the leg or you end up being more sore than you were. Um, then you, you won't get better any faster. Um, these are, those are for resting and um, rehab and that type of thing and recovery. Um, the functional braces like these are the ones that you're going to play soccer in, you're going to want to, you know, play any kind of sports. Um, it's good for going up and down stairs and that type of thing. So depending on your age and, and on your activity, you can wear these all day long. And I hope that answers your question. So um, the last thing we're going to talk about today are the, the um, boots. There is a short version and a tall standard version. Um, we use a little bit of both in our practice, depending on what the problem is. But I would like to clarify this because I know we see this a lot. Um, and I'm gonna have Sarah stay right there. But this is a short version and this is the standard version and they are used for two different things. The short version is used more for foot fractures, um, um, which we call or, or toe fractures or something like that, anything on the foot area. The taller boots are usually used for, they can be used for foot, um, but they also are used for more ankle, high ankle fractures, ankle sprains and that type of thing. Um, so depending on what your physician provides for you um, is based on, on the, your diagnosis. 
Um, so I'm, we're going to use the tall boot because we do use that one a lot. These boots are light. They don't have a whole lot of height on them, um, but they stabilize the foot so that you don't um, have to do, you're not doing a lot of bending. Again, these are, I don't want to call them functional boots because they, you, you'll do function in them. However, usually you have an injury in here and you need to only walk as, as necessary. Uh, no big trips around the mall or anything like that. These liners come out and you can wash them. Um, I would hand wash or gentle cycle with just a little bit of soap because you have to remember that a lot of this is up against your skin and can irritate. Um, we do recommend that you wear a sock, um, preferably a tall sock, um, so that you can keep this cleaner. Um, as far as sleeping in it, most people don't sleep in this boot um, unless it's something that your provider has told you to do. Um, usually you do not just because it's you've been walking around all over the place and you have you have everything with you when you go to bed at night but if you don't have if you're not in the boot then they may have you in something else for nighttime so what we'll do with this is I'll put Sarah's foot in here um, sizing is very important um, you don't want to have a boot that's too big or a boot that's too small so when you're fitting, when we're fitting our patients, we want to make sure that the, the toes are not hanging over the edge or they're not too far back. If, they're, if the, the brace is too big for her, then she's going to end up tripping over this and then we'll end up with a hip fracture or something, God forbid. So, um, but if it is too small, then her toes are going to hang over and going to cause those toes to, she'll get blisters and um, you know, have a lot of pain just in the underneath the toe area. So. This is all Velcro, so we will pull this around here. This is Velcro also. We'll stick that down like that. Again, she has socks on. And then we have the front piece here that also has a little padding here um, for, for rubbing and that type of thing. So we'll fix that right there. I like to use this strap right here around the ankle. Where is it? first because that just anchors the heel back. You want to make sure that heel is pushed all the way back into the boot. And then you'll take this strap right here and do this one first. So hold that there just like with the, with the knee brace. You have a strap to hold there. Again, don't pull these too tight. Um, that's important again. You don't want to have circulation issues or anything like that. Um, then I, I, the next one I'll use is the ortho retaining strap, I'll call it. And that one will go down, that one is down at the bottom of the foot. And then I work my way up the leg. Like so. Again, the short boot won't have as many straps, but it's the same concept. And most of our, most of our boots that we use these days are um, what we call pneumatic. And what pneumatic means is that you can push air into them. So what you have in this particular um, brand, you have a little button right here that you can push some air in. And what that does, that most people don't realize, um, is it takes that space out from around the heel and the ankle. You don't wanna to put too much air in there. So don't overdo it. Just do enough and it's something that you will feel that we obviously can't feel, but just enough to take that space out. Um, and then if you needed to take some air out, you just push that little button right there. So this is the tall and the short boots. While you have the boot on, I have a question. A person asked about uh, what brace is appropriate for plantar fasciitis, but I didn't know if that would be the boot or that that is a brace. That is, uh, that's a great question too. There are some, some of our providers will treat you in a um, short or a tall boot, um, and some will give you a night splint uh, with um, some little heel cups. It just depends on who the provider is. But that is, that it is a treatment for plantar fasciitis. And what it does is the whole purpose of it is to help you rest your foot in that one position. And then the night splints will obviously keep you in that, um, that position so that you're plantar fascia stays stretched out. So, yes, that's a great question. Okay. All 
right, there's a couple tips that I wanted to um, I wanted to give to to, to you all. Um, most of these braces that we have, uh, and if you don't have, you can get online. But most of these braces that we have have what we call a QR code on them. So if you get home and you happen to want to see what you forgot something, you forgot how to put it on or something like that, you can just use your smartphone and scan this QR code and it will give you the YouTube video, which is very helpful. Of course, you know, you can always come back to us um, and you should get that information before you leave. We want to make sure that you have the, the brace, that the brace is going to fit you and it's going to fit well because it is part of your recovery. Um, the second tip that I have is regarding the boots. Um, a lot of times with the boots, you have a little bit of a height difference on one side. Um, we recommend that you get a little heel lift, put it in your other shoe, and um, that will kind of balance you out a little bit because when you do have that lack of, um, when you do have that difference, a lot of times that can hurt your knee, your hip, um, even up to your shoulder uh, and neck. So. Um, with that, if you are in a boot, that would be a great opportunity to um, to fix that with putting just a little heel lift on the other side. Um, uh, most most popular um, post-op uh, braces that we have, again, I'm just going to tell you again, they are considered post-op braces. They are non-functional braces. They are for after surgery um, or after an injury, and they are not made to do a lot of activity. So please um, try your best. I know everybody has lots of things to do, but try your best to rest and relax in these braces until you're able and until your provider tells you that you can start doing more things. This is extremely important time to just take it easy and um, use your brace for your, for your rest and relaxation. Um, Since you touched on knee braces, one of the questions is with regards to the knee, bra knee braces, if you purchase one at a drugstore, how sh tight should they fit? That's a great question too. When you do purchase them at a store, the uh, unfortunately you can't get a good measurement um, ahead of time, which is what we will do for you here uh, and something I was going to talk about in a few minutes, but um, it, they should be snug. Um, and I can't, I can't really answer it as clearly as I know everybody wants to because we do all measurements here to make sure that you get the correct size. Um, sometimes they'll go outside that size, but for the most part, they're pretty close to, um, to the measurements that we take. So um, snug, but not too tight. And that's really um, the, the thing that I can tell you about any of these straps or, or anything that you pull on or anything like that. Um, and then the, uh, and that's what, that's my tip number four. Of course, it's always up to you if you prefer to buy something online or in a drugstore, um, but beware that not all online products are the same. Um, anything that we have here at Ortho Virginia, uh, we have thoroughly looked at um, to, to make sure that um, it reflects the quality of, of our practice and our providers. Um, so we, we are sure that this is gonna be something that you're gonna need um, and you're going to get exactly what you need from us. Um, it is precisely measured, so you always have the right size. If for some reason um, you don't, uh, you get home and swelling goes down or something like that, you need to call us and um, we will get you fit in something that is, is more appropriate for that time. Um, and then lastly, I think it's important that everybody know that all of our major bracing, um, which is all the stuff here, um, all of our major bracing is sent to you um, through your insurance. So when you do have an insurance claim with a brace, it usually will go towards your deductible. Um, we've seen many types of um, situations where patients have paid less uh, for um, using our bracing um, versus buying something online. And um, you're, you're definitely gonna get, get what you need. And there are even some cases where they pay 100%. So just keep that in mind. Um, that the quality of, of how you're getting fit and what you're getting fit when you come to Ortho Virginia to see us. Um, I hope you have found this information um, helpful um, that we shared today. Um, it's important to talk to your orthopedic provider uh, about any conditions or issues that you have. Um, your DME department is here to help you as well. And um, uh, 
One last thing I do want to tell you all is that um, right now, especially right now, you're my chart. If you're not on my chart, uh, it is a very important thing to be on right now. Um, it is a great tool for you to use for communicating with your provider and their staff. So please, if you're not on my chart, um, please sign up and, and get on there. You also can see lots of information about your own treatment here. Great. We do have a couple more questions uh, for Chris and or Sarah. Uh, one of them is regards to the knee brace. My spouse has a knee brace at home and now I need one. Can I use his? Well, um, if you guys are the same exact size, that would be great. Um, if it is a, bra a functional brace that goes on right or left, um, you need to first make sure that it's, it's going on the correct side. Um, we have braces that, are, um, that can go on either side and we have some that are specifically right or left. Um, I would recommend if you're a patient of ours and you come in that you have one of the um, uh, orthotic fitters or athletic trainers take a look at it and see if it even fits you correctly. So that would be my recommendation there. Okay. Can I add to that? Absolutely. Um, you also want to make sure that what type of brace your husband has is appropriate for your needs because, as we said, there are lots of types of knee bracing and they're not all the same brace for all the same problems. So we Correct. would need to know what your problem is first. Perfect. Another question about a knee brace is, is there a way to alter the functional knee brace that you showed if it impinges on the back of the knee? Uh, the knee brace, uh, if we're talking about this functional one here, um, usually you have a little hole here um, what, what we have done with some patients is be, some people may have a little bit of extra fluff back here. So what we'll do is we'll put them in a knee sleeve that has a little um, cotton lycra in it and that kind of smooths everything out back here. And then you can wrap this around the cotton lycra um, sleeve. You can get those anywhere. Um, you can even actually take a pair of leggings, cut each leg off, and you've got yourself a cotton lycra sleeve. So. That's a good tip, and it's a lot less expensive for the patients to do it that way. Okay. We do have another one. Uh, do compression sleeves help at all? Yes, they do. Um, there's a reason for hinges and for uh, two and four straps, but if you just want to keep your knee joint warm, um, if you have swelling and you like to have a little compression around it, it does make people feel a lot better. If you have severe arthritis, um, it's fine, but usually what you need for that type of situation is something with straps and hinges. So if you're functioning, doing a lot of functioning, a lot to playing tennis or something like that, and you have severe arthritis in your knee, it's probably better to get more of a functional brace um, and maybe wear a knee sleeve underneath it. It'll be a little bit more than just that. Perfect. I think most of the questions that we had, you answered. So I believe that is all the questions that we have for right now. Great. Thank you so much, everyone. And if you have any further questions, please let us know, and we'll be happy to answer them.